I run a unifying network in my house consisting of access point switches and a USG, which is the gateway. All of this is controlled by a controller software that runs on a PC. I have to keep that PC on 24 seven for the controller software to operate. Well, I have a Synology NAS already that runs 24 seven. So it's waste of resources to keep that PC on. So what I'm gonna do today is move over all of my control software to the Synology NAS in a Docker container. And we're gonna transfer the configuration from my current location on the uh, PC over to the container. So let's get started. Before I jump over to the Synology now, I just wanna point out, since a lot of you know me from the Home Assistant world, that there is an add-on in Home Assistant that you can add to your Home Assistant device to run the Unify controller. Uh, I tried this on a yellow for a little bit, and I think it's got some resource issues where it's more than my yellow can handle with everything else that I'm running on the yellow. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it on the Synology NAS anyway. If you wanna just run it in Home Assistant, Home Assistant, it's super easy to do that. You can just click on add on store down here, search for Unify, and just add your Unify controller here. So that is what you can do as, in addition to uh, adding this uh, to a Synology NAS or instead of adding it to Synology NAS. All right, so go over to the NAS here. First thing you need to do is make sure that you're running Docker. And if you're on a standard, this is a DS918 plus for me. This is the latest version of the Synology operating system. So it should look similar to you. So click on Package Center, search for Docker. And I already have it installed. So I'm just gonna open it up. And I'm gonna go do an image. Uh, before I do that, I wanna create a folder for this. So let's go to File Station. And I wanna create a folder. Once you install Docker, you'll have this Docker directory. You wanna create a new folder. I'm gonna call it Unify Controller. Say okay. All right, we can close that out now. So what we wanna do now is we want to go into Docker and we wanna to go to the registry and you wanna search for Unify. There's gonna be a few of those that show up. I'm interested in this uh, Jacob Alberti Unify. That's the one I'm gonna to use today. So I can click on that, click on download. And if I wanna, um, choose a different version than the latest. You can choose that here. I'm just gonna use latest, select, and then I can come over here to image. I think the file size is around 700 meg or so. So we'll wait for that to finish and then we'll continue after that. Okay, that is finished downloading. You can see that it's stopped here. I'm gonna go over here to image and I'm gonna double click on that. And I'm going to click on use same network as Docker host. Some of the online uh, articles I've seen have this in a different spot. So this is what you wanna choose here. You're not using selective networks, you're using the same network as Docker host. Click on next. And then you wanna give it a name. I'm just gonna call it Unify Controller again. You can put whatever you want in the container name. You can enable resource limitation if you want to, uh, so that it doesn't take over your uh, whole Docker system if you're running more than one thing, that's up to you. I'm gonna leave that unchecked for now. I do want to enable auto restart. And then I want to click on advanced settings here. A couple of changes I want to make are to set the bind privilege and the run as UID zero to false. We don't need that kind of privilege, privilege elevation in order for this to work. So we're going to turn both of those off or set them to false. We'll save that. And then we'll go next. And then we want to add volume. So we're going to add a folder. This is the folder you just created under the Docker container. So Docker Unify Controller, select that one. And then your mount path is going to be slash Unify because that's where it is in the Docker container. So you wanna make sure you have UNIFI for your Docker container and click on next. And then if that's all of the settings you need to set, which it is, you just run this container after the wizard is finished. And then you click on done. While we're doing that, if you're running Synology NAS, uh, or I'm sorry, if you're running the, the uh, Unify controller somewhere else, like I am now, and I'm moving it over, you wanna make sure you turn that off. But before you do that, you need to go over to system. You need to go over here to backup. So you'll go into this menu here, click on download, and you'll choose the latest backup. So I'm gonna choose the 320, uh, and I'm gonna download that. 
and it's going to start downloading that file because this is a file you're going to import into your new container that you're creating. All right, so that's already done. That's in my downloads folder. We'll come back to that in a little bit. Once you have done that, you need to go ahead and turn off the um, Unify controller wherever you're running it right now. Make sure that it is not running. Otherwise, uh, when the new devices or when the new system comes up, the devices are going to try to adopt to both of them and it's going to get a little weird. And we're going to make a change here in a second as well. All right, so I'm going to shut that down here. Uh, and you'll notice that I am doing this in Home Assistant. I went from the computer to Home Assistant Yellow where I was having some issues with resource condition, which is where it is now. Turn it off there. I don't want it to start on boot because I don't want it to come back up again. Uh, just turn all these switches off. Eventually, I'll just uninstall it from the yellow if, if I get to that point. All right, so we'll go back over here and we'll see what it's doing. Once it's up and running, you should have a container. You should see it running here. Now, in order to get to this, you're going to put in the IP address of your Synology NAS and the port number. So I'm going to do that now and make sure it's port 8443. Now, if you're not using proper SSL certificates, you'll always get this error here. That's fine. I'm going to go there anyway. Now, if you see this right here, you need to wait. When I set this up the first time, it took I don't, probably a full five minutes or so. I, in fact, I thought it was broken. It's going to take a while to fire this all up. Even though the container is sitting here saying that it is running, it is not finished setting everything else up. So you're going to have to wait five or so minutes for this actually to run. And what this does is it goes to this uh, address on port 8443 and it proxies it over to the Java application that's actually running. The Java application isn't up and ready yet. So we'll just wait. And we'll come back to this in a minute whenever this is ready to go. Now, one thing you can do if you're curious whether this is ready to go or not, is you can go over here and SSH into your uh, Synology if you have that set up. And this is a little more advanced, but you can run a command like netstat uh, and look for UDP port 1001. Until that is available, this isn't actually gonna be working up here. Now that I see that that port is available, uh, it's very close to being ready. So let's go ahead and refresh. And there we go. So now it's up and running to the point where we can actually do a restore. So let me zoom in here. So you, if you're starting from scratch, this is where I'll leave it for you to, to do the rest. If you're doing a move like I'm doing, I'm gonna restore from a backup. And remember we, we uh, took that backup file from the other system just a few minutes ago. Make sure that you have the other system turned off already because otherwise when you bring this up over here, the devices are gonna to try to connect to the wrong controller. So you can either go to local backups stored on this device, or you can just do an upload file, which is what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna find the file I just downloaded, which is this one right here. Open that up, ask me if I wanna restore this. And now it's gonna go through that. The same thing is going to occur that just happened before. It's going to restore everything and put it back into this container, restart the container. Um, you'll notice in a few minutes that this will go away and this will no longer be running. So we're gonna sit here again for another five or so minutes and let everything get uh, restored into this new controller location. And then we'll jump in the controller itself and take a look. So give it just a few minutes and then we'll be right back. So for those of you um, that are impatient like I am, you can come over here and you can watch this as well. In addition to checking the status of your UDP ports, and you can see now that that is down, I mean, it's restarting. You should be able to see that it restarts the container here as well. And this should go from nine minutes down to uh, zero. And here we go. And it also tell you here the controller has stopped. Uh, and then it's not unexpected. It actually is doing it on purpose. And now we see that it's up for one minute. We come back over here and we'll have to wait for the whole Java process stuff to get set up and run again. If there's, if there's one thing I don't like about the Unify controller, it's this whole Java thing on outdated. It, I say outdated, the, the whole way it's running. Um, it requires Java and a bunch of other stuff. And even though the container is running, it takes a while for the whole system to, to start up and run. It takes a little bit of time. So that, that's just kind of a drawback I don't like, uh, but I live with it. Once it's up and running, it should be fine. You shouldn't have to worry about doing all this stuff. 
All right, so we'll give it a few more minutes and then when it's all fully back up and running, we will get into the controller itself and take a look. Okay, we can see now that we have the port uh, back up and running, which means that the system is probably running. Okay, so you'll see here a login screen. Now this is the same username and password that was on your old system. So that's what you will log in with. It's not, it didn't create a new one. Uh, when it transferred the backup file, it brought everything over with it, including this login. So use that to log in. All right, so we're logged in now and we'll see that there's no clients or anything on here. Uh, but it does see all of these and it's starting to adopt them. One of the things you want to do right away is come over here to system, go down here to advanced, and you want to change the controller IP address because this is the inform host. If you're doing an override, which I am, you want to make sure you change the IP address of the override. Otherwise, it's going to try to adopt it to the other IP address, the old IP address where the old system was. So change this and then come back over here. And it may take you a while. It depends on how many devices you have in your network um, and a lot of other factors. But you'll eventually get all of these devices to be adopted and uh, on your new system. You shouldn't have to go in and manually change uh, the inform host on any of them. So give it about an hour or so and then check. And you can already start to see some of these things coming online here. These are all coming online. Uh, under the new controller. So you can see that I really didn't have to do anything at all other than to bring the backup file over. Make sure you're using the latest backup file though, uh, because otherwise you're gonna end up with configurations that may have changed over time. All right, so this is up and running. We can go to the dashboard and we'll start to see uh, my information here. And then we'll start to see data collecting. Um, and it says here, uh, graph will populate once required data is gathered. So as it starts to pull things online, You'll have all of this. What you won't have is your history. You'll need to, uh, you'll start over with the history that's stored here. So there won't be any experience or anything like that. None of the uh, traffic identification, if you're using that, is available either. All right, so that's super simple. Bring over your USG to the Synology NAS, run it in a Docker container, uh, and then you have full access to all of the control options you have in your uh, online USG US, or Unify controller. So let me know if you have any questions down below. Um, if you're not a subscriber, I'd appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel. It helps the algorithms and all the blah, blah, blah stuff. And if you wanna support what I do, feel free to join the channel. That's also an option available as well. You just click down there on the join button. And thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting what I do for those that do support me. And we will see you on the next video.